Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my Learn to Program series. In this part of the tutorial, we'll cover static methods as well as static variables. I'll show you how to make your own modules. We'll also get deeply into exception handling. And if you haven't watched any of the previous parts of the tutorial, please watch that. I provide a link to the playlist on the screen here. Also, in the description, you will find all of the code that is heavily commented as well as a transcript of the video. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Alright, so first off we're going to cover static methods. Now a static method is going to allow access without the need to initialize a class, which means you'll be able to execute these methods without creating an object. And they are mainly used as utility methods or also whenever it doesn't make sense for a real world object to be able to perform a task, but you still need to have that method available. And I'll demonstrate it here so that you'll understand. Let's say we create a class called sum. And if you want to use a static method, you have to use the static method decorator, which we've seen previously. So you're just going to type in at and then static method and now it's a static method and here you'll just type in whatever the, your name of your method is I'm going to call this get sum and it's going to receive a whole bunch of arguments so there's our splat again and here we're just going to sum all of the values that are passed inside of here so you've seen this before just wanted to demonstrate it and sum and we will increment all of these and now we can return that sum and then of course we will come down here and define main and then inside of main, if we want to execute that, remember I said you don't need to create an object of that type. You can just simply come in and list the class name followed by whatever the function is or method that you'd like to execute. And then of course we have to come down here and call for main to execute and run it. And you can see right there it was able to go in and execute that. So there it is. That's a static method. That's how you create them. And this right here is how you call for them. So pretty cool stuff. Now I'm going to jump over and demonstrate a static variable. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dog class and inside of it if you want to create a static variable it's very simple you just come in here and you just create one. And if you create a field outside of any other methods it's automatically a static variable and what that means is the value of this is going to be shared by every object of type dog that is ever created so let's come in here and let's initialize our dog objects and I'm just gonna have it pass in name and I'm gonna have unknown be in here as a default and then we will of course assign name and now if you want to reference the static variable what you do is just proceed it with whatever the class name is so what I'm doing here is I'm going to be monitoring the number of dogs this should be I'm going to be monitoring every single time a dog object is created and why does that make sense to do as a static field or a static variable well it doesn't make sense for dogs to be able to count and so there you go so what I'm going to do is just simply increment that like this. And then also I'm going to come in here and create a static method. So there's a static method. And this is just going to receive or retrieve the number of dogs that number of dog objects that have been created. Doesn't need to do anything. And we will just say print. There are currently a certain number of dogs and we'll put this inside of quotes and then we will also use format on this and if we want to get that value once again we're just going to go dog num of dogs and that's going to retrieve that static variable or field for us and now what we're going to be able to do is come in here and create a bunch of different type of dog objects so we'll call the first one spot and that's going to increment number of dogs as you're going to see for all the other ones that are created and we'll also create another one and we'll just call this dog Steve. Nah, let's call him Doug. And you'll be able to see if we call spot and then follow that up with get num of dogs and execute that, it's going to say there are currently two dogs. And that is going to stay the same for every single one of these guys. So just to prove that, let's come in here and let's do the same thing for Doug. Paste that in there and you're gonna see there you go two dogs so that's a demonstration of a static field or a static variable and now I'm gonna jump over and show you how to create your own modules 
what I'm going to do in a separate Python file inside of the same directory as where you have Python tut.py. I'm going to come in here and just define a very simple little function. I'm going to call this get sum, and it's going to do exactly the same things it did last time whenever we use this. So there you go. And we're just going to save that. And then what we're going to do, you can pause the screen if you want to type that in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and import that directly into my program. And to import it, you just list whatever the name of the file is minus the PY part at the end. And then to get access to that function, you're just going to proceed it with whatever the file name is and then the function that you want. So we're going to say print and we'll say sum and then after that you can just type in sum and the function that you want to execute. Do this for any type of function and you can see indeed that worked. So that's how you create your own custom little modules. Another thing that's important to know however is you can use from instead of import and what it's going to do, what from's going to do is copy specific functions from a module so we can come in here instead and say from sum sum being the module you're copying from you're going to say import get sum like that another thing you could do however is if you wanted to import all of the modules you just put a star inside of there like that and that would import everything but i'm just going to leave it get sum because that's all that's in there right now and if there were other functions in there let's say let's get malt i don't know if you had multiple different functions you wanted to get out of there you could just separate them with a comma right like that and the benefit of using from instead of straight import is now you do not need to list the module's name whenever you use it. So you can just come in here and there's positives and negatives to that. Let's come in and just say get sum like that and run it and there you go. So that's the benefit of from. Say you don't need to use that like you did with import. Now you can just list it like that. So pretty cool stuff. So there you go, that's how to create custom modules as well as how to use static variables and methods. And now let's jump in and talk more about exception handling. Now as a review, exceptions are going to be triggered either when an error occurs or when you want an exception to be triggered. And we use exceptions to both handle errors, execute specific code when code generates something out of the ordinary, or to always execute code when something happens, for example, to close a file that was previously opened. And basically, when an error occurs, you're going to stop executing code and jump to execute other code that is going to respond to that error. So what I want to do here at first is I'm going to basically handle an exception. What you're going to do is you're going to put your problematic code inside of a try block like this. And here, I'm going to create a list that is going to have three individual pieces of data inside of it. And then what I want to do is try to print an index that doesn't exist. So I'm going to say a list, and I'm going to say I want whatever is in index three. Well, there is no index three. This is zero, this is one, and this is two. So what is this going to do? Well, this is going to trigger an error, and it's an error that I want to be able to handle. Specifically, that error is going to be called, or the exception that's going to be triggered is going to be called the index error. And how we're going to be able to catch that error is inside of an accept block. So I'm going to type in accept. And then if I know what my error is called, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in the error that I expect that could be triggered. Then I can print out a nice message on the screen rather than a whole bunch of nasty errors. Sorry, that index doesn't exist. And then finally, if another exception, meaning any exception, was triggered, and I want to be able to handle that in a special way instead of printing out a mass of different errors on the screen, I just type accept without any specific exceptions over here. And I could say something like an unknown error occurred. And here you can see, if I run it, it says, sorry, that index doesn't exist. And that's a nice little message versus what you would normally get, which would just be a bunch of nasty codes and things like that that shoot out all over the screen. It's important to know that you can also catch multiple different exceptions with except just by separating them with a series of commas. So let's say I wanted to catch index error and I also wanted to catch a name error exception. I could do so just like that. And I'll show you another example to get a little bit more deeply into exceptions. Now it's also possible for us to make custom exceptions. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call this dog name error. Now this is obviously a silly sort of exception, but if you want to use this, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to inherit from the exception class. And to do that, you just type in exception right like this. And I just want to say that it isn't very common that you would use your own custom exceptions, but just wanted to cover this just so you completely understand all the different options that are available. And inside of this, I'll initialize this guy. And to do so, just type in exception, and I'm going to call init for the exception. And for this, you're going to type in self, and you're also going to type in args and keyword args. I'll get more into keyword args in a tutorial that's coming up. So that's how simple it is to set it up. Of course, it could do a lot more than just this, but it's just basically going to handle this exception and allow us to use a custom exception. And what I'm going to do here is ask the user to enter their dog's name, and then I'm going to trigger an error if the name that they enter contains a number. So you've seen this before. I'm going to say if any, and I'll just say character is digit for character in dog name. So I'm going to be asking if any of the characters inside of dog name are going to be digits. Make sure this dog name like that. And in a situation in which they do have a number inside of the dog name, I'm going to say that's not okay. And if I want to raise my own exception, I just type in raise and I can type in dog name error. And then down inside of here, I can just say accept dog name error and then print out my custom error message which will be your dog's name can't contain a number and if we come in here and run it what is your dog's name and if I type in dog everything's fine if I run it in this side and I say something like r19 whoop gave me an error sorry about that forgot to come up here and throw args and keyword args inside of here paste that inside of there and now run it again. What is your dog's name? And I'll say U90. And you can see your dog's name can't contain a number pops up there on the screen and it's handled. So that's how you make custom exceptions and also how to raise exceptions. And you could also come in here and put in name error or any of the built-in errors that are inside of Python if you'd like to raise the errors that are built into pythons or the exceptions that are built into python so now let's take a look at finally and else now finally is going to be used when you always want certain code to execute whether an exception is raised or not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say num1 i'm going to get two pieces of data and i'll say input and i'll say enter two values to divide and i'll provide that information or that division and I'll put that on the screen and of course let's come in here and throw a split so there we go so we're gonna get two numbers and they are going to be split based off of white space first number is gonna go in num1 second one's gonna go in num2 you guys have seen this already and then we come in and I'm gonna say try and I'll say quotient is going to be equal to and I'll convert num1 into that into an integer and the same with num2 and now I can come in here and print and I think you know what error is probably going to be triggered and we'll do this is going to be equal to and call for format to pull in the right information and what we are specifically going to be putting it in there is num1 inside of the first curly brackets num2 and then quotient inside of there's the final result now the error or the exception that I would like to catch is what we call a zero division error which means that they tried to divide by zero which is a big no-no and in this situation i'll say print you can't divide by zero and then let's say that i want some code to execute if an exception does not occur well that is why else is here and in this situation we could just submit in it and say you didn't raise an exception as the tutorial continues we'll get more into more real world uses of exceptions. I just want to keep this very simple so you can see exactly what's going on. And if there is certain code that you will always want to execute, whether an exception is triggered or an exception isn't triggered, you type in finally, and then you just say something like, I execute no matter what. All right, so let's come in here and test this guy out. Enter two values, and if we come in and we type one 
and two, you're gonna see that went perfectly fine. You didn't raise an exception comes in here. That's because else runs if an exception isn't execute. And the reason why that is the code inside of the else block is executed if an exception isn't raised. And let's come in here and, the, and finally, of course, is going to execute no matter what. And you're gonna see that if I come in here and do like three and zero, boom, you can't divide by zero. You're gonna see here an exception was raised, so the code inside of else wasn't printed. And you're also gonna see once again that no matter what, whatever is inside of finally is gonna be executed whether an exception was raised or it wasn't raised. All right, so now I think it's time for a problem. Basically what I want you to do is I want you to create a file named my data to, and it's going to be a text file, and just put any type of data inside of it, doesn't matter what it is. Then you're going to use what you learned in part eight and a little bit of Google to find out how to open a file without using with, like I previously showed you. And you're going to try to open that file inside of a try block. You're then going to try to catch a file not found error exception. In else, if an exception isn't raised, you are going to print the contents of the file. In finally, you're just gonna print out some type of message that is always going to be printed out on a screen. Doesn't really matter what it is. And then you are going to go in and try to open non-existent file and its name is gonna be mydata3.txt and you're gonna test and see what the differences are. Okay, so pause the video and try that out. I know you can do it. Otherwise, I'm gonna write the code for you right now. Okay, so I went and created mydata2.txt and I threw some information inside of there, so I got that done. Now I'm going to use a try block to come in here and try to open a file without using with. So I'm just gonna say my file is equal to, and how you do that is with open mydata2.txt is what I want to open up and you're going to type in encoding is equal to and we're going to use UTF again. Now I'm going to catch the exception and I'm going to type in accept and like I told you we're going to use file not found error and I'm going to also forgot to talk about as. What as is going to allow you to do is access data and methods in the exception class. So I'm going to throw as inside of there and I'm going to give it the name ex and I'll be able to come in here and print something out. So let's say something like that file. And of course you didn't know about as, so don't worry about that if you didn't know. I just wanted to cover it because I'm here and I wanted to cover it. So I'm gonna print out a message that said that file was not found. And let's go and call our exception here and have it print out some information on the screen. Let's just have its arguments printed out. Then I said inside of else, I want to print the content. So this is going to be triggered if it was able to find the file and to print that information. I'm just going to keep it simple and I'll just say file. And then to print this out, I just go my file, read, and I'll put that on the screen. And then because this is not done with with, I need to actually close the file afterwards. So I want to close my file. And then finally, doesn't matter what I put inside of here, just something silly that's always going to print no matter what. I'll say something like finished working with file and there you go there is all of your code and we'll come in and run it da 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 you're gonna see some random text more random text and some more I finished working with file everything was perfectly fine however if i come in here and change this to three a file that doesn't exist and run it you're gonna see right here that file was not found once again this guy here was triggered and right here, you printed out some information about the type of exception that was met. No such file or directory. And that's the information on it. And you can see once again that finally we're there. So there you go, guys. That's a rundown on a whole bunch of different things. If you didn't catch it or you weren't able to write this code, that's okay. Most important thing is just to be aware of and get used to solving problems. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.